nine ancient omens, one hidden biblical prophecy, revealed through catastrophic events in America's past and present. It sounds like a plot for a movie, but in his new book, The Harbinger, Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn says it's a sign of the end times. Rabbi Kahn combines biblical prophecy with historical events that began in America on 9-11 to keep readers on the edge of their seats. Folks, I was fascinated with this book. It was sent me by the publisher, an advanced copy, Jonathan Kahn. It's called The Harbinger, The Ancient Mystery. And uh, I read it from cover to cover. It's a fascinating book. And it ties the uh, events of 9-11 to the uh, prophecy released uh, by Isaiah in the ninth chapter. And we have the author with us, Jonathan Kahn. He is the uh, rabbi, I believe, of the largest Messianic congregation in America. And uh, Jonathan, I'm glad to have you here. Thank God you, bless you. It's a blessing to be here. All right. Now, the harbinger, a harbinger is like a robin is a harbinger of spring. So mm -hmm. a harbinger is something that kicks off what's coming later. Mm -hmm. You found in Isaiah, what draw you, drew you to Isaiah 9? How did it happen? It suddenly it exploded in your mind. Here it is. Well, in, when 9-11 happened, yeah. you know, our ministry is, is nearby um, uh, when it happened. Uh, I was drawn to Isaiah 9 and 10. I was praying um, that a particular point in Israel's history that was linking up with this. And at the same time, I found out later that David Wilkerson, at the same time, was led that there's a word for America at the same time, and it was the exact same word, exact same verse. Um, and so later on, I was standing at the corner of Ground Zero, and I noticed an object that drew my attention that began the unfolding of a mystery that kept unfolding and getting bigger and bigger and really mind-blowing um, until it got to this, which is an, the, the, an ancient mystery that is behind what is happening in America, what has happened in America, behind 9-11, behind the economic collapse, behind the, the crash of Wall Street, even that has determined the actions and actual, actual words of American leaders, a mystery that goes back two and a half thousand years and is a warning of judgment and a call of God, a prophetic call well, of God. Now, Isaiah 9 was a, a judgment call. It was a rebuke. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, you pointed out so clearly the bricks have fallen. Tell us about that. That, that, that was a yeah. rebuke. Yeah. The, the, what happened was, and this is really the first sign, or one of the first signs of a pattern of national judgment, and that is God removes the hedge of protection after calling a nation and calling a nation right. finally to wake them up. Israel had known God and Israel had turned away from God. So he called them and called them. Finally, he allowed their hedge of protection to be removed. He allowed a strike to come into the land, an enemy to make a strike. It was temporary, it was limited, and it was to call them back. And then there was a grace period when they kind of hung in the balance. But instead of repenting, instead of turning back to God, they made a vow. And the vow in Isaiah 9, 10 says, the bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with quarried stone, hewn stone. The sycamore has been cut down, but we will, we will plant cedars in their place. So they defied God. They said, we're coming back stronger than ever. And so what happened is they set that seals the course of their, of their nation and of judgment. And ultimately, years later, Israel will be destroyed. Well, you know, I said this, that, that the hedge of protection had been taken down, you know, and people said, well, wasn't that a horrible thing to say? Well, I said, this is the first time we've been struck since the war of uh, the, you know, 18, 1912. 1912. Yeah. Uh, we've never had anything like this. And yet, what do we do? How, how do we respond to, to 9-11? Well, when 9 yeah, yeah, well, here's the same exact pattern. Now America has known God, and America has, is turning from God. And has, we know that has turned. And so God is calling. So finally, he allows the same thing, same pattern. He allows the hedge of protection to be removed, an enemy strike. It's limited. It's contained. It's just a warning. Mm. Um, but it's a grace period. And 9-11, remember, everybody flocked to the churches and said, God yeah. bless America, God bless America. But there was no real repentance. There was no real turning and saying, have we done something? No turning. And the problem is, it was, it was the response was the same as ancient Israel's. It was a response of defiance. We're going to come back stronger than ever, stronger than ever. So the thing is that the harbinger, no, when Israel did this, there were nine harbingers of judgment or omens, as you said, that are warning Israel, that appear. And those same nine harbingers of judgment have now reappeared, are reappearing in America on American soil with precision, um, with, involves American leaders. Uh, some are in New York, some happen in uh, Washington. Objects, reenactments, almost ceremonies, um, and happen exact, it's exact, well, precise reenactments. It's chilling when you, yeah. you know, the whole thought 
I mean, I know that you played a big thing about, you know, we will rebuild. That's what the yeah. Jews said, the yeah. Israelis. Yeah. What, what is the parallel here in our country? That's exactly, it's exactly what America did. Uh, in, in, in view of 9-11, it wasn't, again, repentance. It was, we're going to come back stronger than ever, stronger than ever. Leaders start chanting the same words as in ancient Israel. And they said, we're going to rebuild, you know, the Isaiah 9 10 says, we're going to rebuild, we're going to rebuild stronger than before. We're going to come back and we're going to keep going away from God, but we're going to be stronger. That's exactly what happens. They set to rebuild, as, as Israel did, just as it was, we're going to rebuild the towers, we're going to, but stronger than ever, you know, with no repentance. That's the problem, not the rebuilding. Mm -hmm. um, and, we're, and everything that, that happened in ancient Israel, specifically, I mean, there's a, there's a tree involved in this, there's a stone involved in this, um, everything they did that was repeated by America. Um, it start, for instance, uh, it said they, there is a stone, one of the harbingers is a stone yeah. called the Gazit stone, a stone of judgment. And they take a quarried stone and they, and they have to put it, they put it on where the bricks had fallen. And they, it says, we will rebuild with quarried stone. And there they vow, and it's a stone representing defiance. It has to happen in America. In America, after 9-11, they take a stone, the same thing that answers to the Hebrew Gazit stone. They take it, they put it down on ground zero. They have a ceremony around it. The American leaders are gathered, and they pronounce vows over that stone. Uh, another harbinger is that of the tree. It's called the Shakam tree in, in Hebrew. Yeah. Uh, the sycamores have fallen. So a tree has to be struck down by, by the events of 9-11 according for this to happen. That's what happened in Israel. So what happens is freak event, when, as the last tower comes down, it sends out a beam, it sends out a force, and it strikes down an object that happened to be nearby. It's a tree. It's the biblical, it's the sycamore, has the same exact name as that in Isaiah. You mean in America we had a sycamore tree that was struck by 9-11? Yes, and, and, and in New York. What are the chances of that. In New York, right there, the same thing. Everything, every single thing that's in there, these nine harbingers, have happened with exact precision. Where was that tree? Now, your book make it so amazing, that tree. The tree was at the corner of Ground Zero. It was at the courtyard of St. Paul's Chapel, where there's a whole other mystery, you know, be, with that, with the founding of America. Yeah, it was right there. And then, the, and then the, the other harbingers, they have to replace this tree with another particular tree. That's, ex that's what happened in Isaiah 9. That's exactly what they do. They lower another tree. It's the exact exact kind of the Bible that what's said in there. Come on, it was sycamore tree? It was this, the sycamore tree was struck down as a sign of national judgment. Okay. And, and then it's and replaced with, with, what? with what's and called in Hebrew the Erez tree, a certain yeah. kind of tree. They, they, that's in Isaiah 9, 10. That's exactly what happened. They replaced it with the same tree in the same soil. They have a ceremony around it. They pronounce it. It's a, it's a defiant thing. Same thing. And, and then there's the vows itself. One, one of the, the harbingers is that, that the leaders of Israel had to say this vow, we will rebuild with quar all this, this thing. It has to happen. So, so for this to come true, it has to happen in America. American leaders have to be able to say this vow, proclaim this vow, which, which really seals judgment on the nation, um, and, and do it in the capital city, which they would have done in Samaria. Right. So, but the thing is that wh who in their right mind, what leader would in their right mind do this? Because it's pronouncing judgment on the nation. It happens on the very day after 9-11. On, on September 12th, America gives its response to God. It's not repentance. What happens is the Congress gathers, and on Capitol Hill, the Senate Majority Leader comes to the stand, and he says, and he pronounces the, he, pronou he actually voices the exact vow of Isaiah 9-10, the ancient vow of America's leader. He, he, had, he does this, which is, he doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, nobody right. has any idea, and it is pronouncing judgment on the nation. It's linking America to ancient Israel. We will, that was Dashiell. That, that was, was Tom Dashiell. Dashiell. Tom Dashiell. The, the day after. The day after, in the exact verse, it's to the world. I mean, he couldn't be more precise. It's linking, he, but he doesn't realize what he's doing. It's, it, is, it is setting the course, and it's even prophetic, because he's saying things that is going to happen. He says, this is going to be the course of America. We're going to follow Isaiah 910. He says that in effect. That's exactly what happened. For the, the next years, we, we sought to defy it and, and, and beat it back. But the problem is without repentance, you cannot, well, you cannot solve the problem. They, they even linked to, 9, I mean, to, to Isaiah 9, didn't it? Was, was it uh, yeah. Biden? Who, who, who oh. said? Did Dashiell quote? Did Dashiell quoted it exactly. He says, he says, I believe there's a, Lord, there's a word, and it's from Isaiah, that speaks to all of us at times like this. And then he says, the bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The, the sycamore, the, fig, the, the biblical fig tree, has been struck down, but we will plant cedars in their place. He doesn't realize, as he says that, what it means. And he doesn't realize that there is an actual sycamore tree that was struck down. Yeah. He doesn't realize that, that prophetically, years later, they're going to put the same thing. He's pro it's like he's prophesying without realizing. Hold up. That sycamore, you pointed that, that after they had signed the uh, Constitution, they marched across to that church. 
Well, the, 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 there's, there's a, yeah, there's a biblical right. principle that, that, that with Israel, judgment came to the Temple Mount. That's where the nation was consecrated to God, dedicated to God. So judgment returns to the consecration ground. So in American history, the, the first day of America as a, as a fully formed nation was, uh, was April 30th, 1789, with Washington's inauguration. Right. And they, you, as I said, they go over, and, they, and then after the inauguration, he leads them to go over and to, to dedicate the future of America at this ground. So that's the consecration ground. So where was it? The first capital of America wasn't Washington. It was New, New York, York City, right. lower Manhattan. So where did they go? They went to dedicate America, commit the future to God's hands, in what is now Ground Zero, the corner of Ground Zero, St. Paul's Chapel. It still stands. They dedicated America. The judgment returns to the place of consecration. And with Israel, and, and that's, the, that's the soil where the sycamore was growing. That's the soil, America's consecration ground, where the other tree was planted and where these harbingers appear. And so it's a warning. With, with, with God, he was calling Amer uh, Israel back, saying, he's saying, remember your consecration. Return to me. Return to this ground. It all happened. It all happened. And on 9-11, there was only one place that was protected or on the perimeter of 9-11. All the buildings were, were destroyed or charred. Or one, one was protected. It was the ground where America was prayed for, the consecration at St. Paul's Chapel. And on that day, a shock wave went forth from ground zero, the place of consecration, yes. and it struck Federal Hall, the place where Washington was sworn in. That's where the government began, and it cracked the foundation on that day of America's foundation. And also on that day, Washington gave a prophetic warning. What and, and he said, and I'm paraphrasing, no. but he says, basically, if America ever turns away from God, if a nation turns away from God's ways, God's rules, the favor, the smiles of heaven, or the favor of God are going to be with, removed from the land. He does it on that day, goes to where ground zero is, and then so now it is there where the favor or the protection was lifted up. Yeah. But the Federal Hall was cracked. The foundation yes, was cracked. Yes, on 9-11, from a shockwave from ground zero, you have the place of dedication, and you have the place of the beginning of America's nation. But they have rebuilt, I mean, they planted yeah. the tree, a new tree. I mean, they rebuilt, I mean, they put they put yeah. in a dress stone, and then the, the, what everything. Kind of, what kind of tree do they put in? They put a Hebrew Erez tree, which is which is a cedar tree. It's a panache. It has to be a panache tree. That's the most exact definition of the Hebrew cedar. And so they put in a tree, and nobody planned it. Someone just donated it. Say, okay, put this tree in. And so instead of doing another sycamore, they do the exact tree. So they they plant it, and they have a ceremony. They call it the tree of hope. They make all these things into symbols without realizing yeah. it. It's the exact tree in the Bible. It's the exact Hebrew definition Panesh. of that tree. Is Erez, Erez tree, Erez. which is is a panache tree. It can be a cedar, but okay. it's also an evergreen conifer. Panache tree is the exact tree, and nobody plans it. It just happens. It just happens. And then it, it goes on because the harbingers, and we, we, you know, we're just touching on them, but there's more. But it goes on to affect everything the economy, the crash of Wall Street. There's, there's a mystery uh, in American history that the beginning of America's rise to superpower, financial rise, there's a, there's a sign that appears at the beginning. It reappears on 9 11. It is all, the, it is the, we get the word, you know, Wall Street is called Buttonwood, you know, yeah. uh, you know yeah. because, the, because there was, the covenant was signed under a Buttonwood, buttonwood tree. tree. Yeah. And so what is the Buttonwood tree? It's the sixth more tree. It's the sign of American wow. power. On 9-11, that tree is struck down, even, even a foreshadow of the striking down of America's economy, which happens years later. The tower strikes that down. There's another um, mi a mystery in it of three witnesses, that in the Bible, there have to be two or three witnesses to right. confirm a fact or a matter of judgment. So you had, we mentioned um, Tom Daschle. He, right. he, he's the first witness. He, he links America to, to ancient Israel. He pronounces it. That's not the only one. Three years later, on, on the anniversary of 9-11, another national leader come, is in Washington. He gets to, the, to the, his, beat, his, his podium, and he, he says the speech, his speech, his entire speech, he says, we have a word here now, and he starts reciting the ancient vow of judgment, the same verse of Isaiah, and he builds his whole speech around it. It is John Edwards. Yeah. And he, the whole speech is built around, and he has no idea still that it's actually happening. The sycamore, he's saying we're going to do this, so he's speaking figuratively. He has no idea. And then the third witness is the President of the United States, and that is Barack Obama. And this is, at, this is not even 9-11. This is right. after 9-11. The economic collapse happens, and he gets up to, to tell the nation, hey, we're going to come back. And he, he makes the center of his speech. He says, I want every American to know these words, basically. This, we will 
rebuild, we will recover. He actually says the exact words that, that, uh, that Tom Daschle said from the pulpit. The third one, in the same place, Capitol Hill. One said it on one wing of Congress, yeah. the other says it on the other wing of Congress. Everything. So the economic, even the economic collapse, even the very day of it, even the very days were ordained in an ancient mystery in the, in, in the Bible. It's, it's amazing. The, the, the crash of Wall Street, you know, we also, this. there's a mystery in the Bible called the Shemitah or the seven year mystery. Every seven years, Israel mm. would rest, you know, and, and uh, on the last day of that year, they would they would wipe out their credit and debt. It would happen on the, on, on the specific Hebrew day, the 29th of Elul. And so it became, it was supposed to be, all, the, the nation's financial accounts are wiped out. And this is a blessing, but they turned it into a judgment. They turned away from God, so it came back as a sign of judgment. So the Shemitah, or the, or the seven sab the sabbatical year, it becomes a sign of judgment against a nation that has driven God out of its life, that has put money above him, and that it strikes the financial uh, realm of it. So when did the... The financial collapse happened. It happened seven years after the first shaking comes the second shaking. Seven years after 9-11, September of 2008, seven years to the month, the second week of September, seven, seven years to the week um, when America is commemorating 9-11. It actually, actually the, the second calamity is set in motion. And when did the greatest day of the collapse happen? It happened at the end of September, greatest stock market crash in American history, right. point crash. When did it happen? It happened on the 29th day of Elul, the day of the Shemitah, the day of the judgment on a nation's financial realm that has driven God out. And one other thing, I know there's so much, is that if you go back seven years, not only do you find 9-11, you, find you know, but you find the other greatest crash in American history up to that point. It happens, and when did that take place? It happened on the exact same Hebrew day, the 29th day of Elul, the, the day of the judgment of a nation's financial realm that has turned away from God, driven him out. And it's mind-boggling, mind-boggling. And, and there's so much, but, but the call is God is calling America back. How soon do you think the final blow will come? If it, is there a timing in the he Hebrew that you found? Well, the, the, with, with Israel, with ancient Israel, it was 10 years, which we're around, that we're there now, 10 years. With Judah, it's the same pattern. There was an initial strike, then there was a, a total collapse. Um, it was 20 years, so we can't say exactly. There's no one, there's a pattern, but with America, the point, the thing is that we are now in this period of hanging in the balance. And it's certainly, if we, we say after 9-11, have we returned to God? No. Uh, it's returned more away from God. And so God is calling America to return. He's, God is calling his people to return. It's that's not true. just, you said it earlier, and that's the word I had. He's calling, he's calling America, the people of God, we have to pray. We have, if my people who are called by my name shall yeah. humble themselves and pray. He is calling each of us to, to, to consecrate ourselves, to pray for America. And to, the time is late. And to turn away from whatever we have to turn away from and get back to him. Be light, spread the word. Well, that question. You know, it's an amazing thing that uh, George Bush as president said the way to deal with this matter is to go out and everybody shop and spend money. You remember? Yes. Exactly. Shop. Exactly. Spend money. Exactly. Yeah. And the, and the thing is, yeah, and that's exactly an end. I mean, we couldn't even go into it, but, but it was actually the Federal Reserve that took actions right then. They took an action on, on the day of that first collapse after 9-11. And the actions they took, the, there's an Isaiah 9-10 effect in the book saying that as the nation seeks to come back without repenting, uh, it's going to actually bring about the next shaking, the next mm. collapse. Exactly what happened. As America said, we're going to cut the interest rates. Well, that actually produced this house of cards it actually, 9-11 actually produced, actually brought about the economic collapse. It's amazing. How did God get to this? this just, was this sort of a revelation? I mean, did the Holy Spirit? It just, it, just, it just happened. It was like one step after the other. I didn't know where it was going. It just kept leading and leading to the next step until it just opened up and exploded. Well, John, I tell you, this is one great book. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to get this. Can we get this book? I mean, is it available now? It's, uh, I think the official release, I think it happens to be today. today and it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't planned. It happens to be today. And I think it's available everywhere, Amazon, everywhere. Well, you um, don't want to the Harbinger folks. This is a read you need to make. And uh, maybe our leaders will read it. So the answer is national repentance. We've got to come back to God. Absolutely. As a nation and the people of God, we are, we're kind of, there are people who are saying, let's just, they're just, just handing it out to everybody. And just to get the word out, we, we must return. We must return. Yeah. And we're in the days of danger. Well, it's a prophetic word. Thank you so Thank much. You, God bless you. Thank you.